This is the last lecture of chapter 13. We're looking at benzene and its derivatives. So last lecture we looked at some reactions of benzene. In this lecture we will look at a few more reactions of benzene. Then we will concentrate on a special type of substituted benzene that's called phenol. So we'll look at phenols, different phenols. We'll look at the structure of phenols and of substituted phenols. Then we will concentrate on synthetic and natural phenols and their importance in everyday life. They play a very important role in everyday life. Lastly, we look at reactions of phenols. Of course, being organic chemistry, we cannot get away from the different reactions that compounds undergo to form other compounds. Okay, let us begin. So, as a quick review, the reactions of benzene is called aromatic substitution reaction. Keyword here is substitution. So as we have described in the last lecture, it's basically taking one of the hydrogens and substituting a atom or a group of atom from another reagent with that hydrogen to get a product over here so now we have X from a reagent and the hydrogen that's been substituted combines with the other portion of that molecule to get HY so that is the substitution reactions that benzene undergoes. They're also called aromatic substitution reaction. Last lecture we looked at this reaction. So let's quickly review it. So here's benzene with six hydrogens and six carbons. Here's the reagent, chlorine. Notice we have here chlorine molecule, which is Cl2. So for the substitution reaction, any one of these hydrogens can be substituted for a chlorine atom. In this case, I've shown that this hydrogen is substituted for this chlorine to get chlorine here, and that molecule is called chlorobenzene. The hydrogen bonds to the other chlorine atom to get HCl as the inorganic product. In organic chemistry, we're mostly concerned with the organic product. As you can recall, organic chemistry is the study of compounds which contain primarily carbons and hydrogen. They do contain a few heteroatoms such as chlorine, other halogens, oxygen, and nitrogen. So it's also written like this, so don't get confused. Notice this is the line angle representation. No hydrogens or carbons are shown, but you know that there is a hydrogen here, likewise here, and throughout the six carbons. Chlorine is written as Cl2 because that is the molecular way of writing chlorine. Here's a catalyst. Always, a catalyst is always used for the aromatic substitution reactions. In this case, it's FeCl3. We won't go into the details to describe how this catalyst actually works. But just remember that you need a catalyst, and this is the catalyst that's used. For the substitution reaction, H 
is substituted for one of these chlorines to get chlorobenzene as our organic product. The other product is of course HCl where this H combines with the other Cl to get HCl. We did go over this one also, but let's do a quick review. This is the alkylation, alkyl group. Remember again, an alkyl group is a carbon-containing group. So here we have a hydrogen, and here we have another reactant. It's an alkyl chloride. So here we have R and Cl. The substitution reaction will involve the R group with the H, so we have R over here. So this is a generic way of writing this reaction, a general. We'll get into the specifics in a second. The other product, of course, is H and Cl to get HCl, but this is our organic product. A specific example. Here is benzene and here is chloromethane. So this is our R group right here. And here is a hydrogen. Again, it could be any one of these hydrogens here. But I chose this one for that substitution. And we are substituting here the CH3. And here it is. And of course the hydrogen combines with the chlorine to get HCl as the inorganic product, but this is our organic product. Another reaction that we did the last lecture was the acylation. Remember the acyl group is R, carbon, and a double bond to some other group here. But the main thing is that this R is the same alkyl group or the carbon containing group, but it has here a carbon oxygen double bond. Notice double bond right here. So for the substitution reaction, all you have to do is identify from the reagent the acyl group, which is right here. And here is our chlorine. So you can imagine here this hydrogen bonds with this chlorine to get HCl. And the acyl group bonds to this carbon right here. And here it is. So this is our product. Notice the functional group here is a ketone because we have a carbon-oxygen double bond to an R group and another R group. A specific reaction in which a catalyst is used. This catalyst is AlCl3. Just remember to put a catalyst. It could be FeCl3 or AlCl3. If you forget the type catalyst, just put catalyst. Because these reactions will not go unless a catalyst is present. Don't forget, a catalyst is a compound that's used in a reaction to aid the reaction, speed it up, make it go, but not consumed. So after the reaction is done, the catalyst is recovered. Here is benzene, and here is a reactant. As you can see, this is the chlorine right here, so this will bond with one of these H's, again, any H would work to get HCl. And here is our acyl group right here, which will bond to that carbon as shown here. So we have essentially made that bond. Again, that's a ketone because the carbonyl group here, or the carbon-oxygen double bond, is bonded to two R groups. Okay, for today's lecture, this is new, we will look at the nitration of benzene. Keyword here is nitration. 
it is a substitution reaction but because the group that do, that's being substituted is a nitro group we call this specific reaction the nitration so here's benzene again and let's concentrate on this hydrogen for the time being this is nitric acid as you can remember from your gen chem this is the Lewis dot structure of nitric acid Lewis dot structure where all the bonds and non-bonding electrons are shown the main reason why we are drawing this out is to find the group that's being substituted here is that group right here this is the nitro group or NO2 group this so this NO2 group here is substituting for this hydrogen and here it is this compound is nitrobenzene this H combines with this OH to form H2O so that's your product so once again the reaction is benzene with nitric acid here's your catalyst in this case it is sulfuric acid as a catalyst to give nitrobenzene as our organic product and water so again you should be able to predict the products of these reactions if given the reactant benzene and another reagent and a catalyst let's look at another reaction here this one is called the sulfonation as you can imagine it's a substitution reaction where a sulfate group is added so let us look at benzene again here's the hydrogen of course it could be any one of these hydrogens here but I pick this one here because it is just closer to the reactant but it could be any one here's the Lewis dot structure down here again you can see that there's a connection between organic chemistry and general chemistry which you did last year or last semester the Lewis dot structure gives you an idea of what group will react with the molecules so here is sulfuric acid you can imagine here again here is the group that will substitute for that hydrogen and here it is so this group is the SO3 group we put a line to show that it's bonded to something else back here so here it is so it's bonded to the benzene ring of course as you can imagine here is HO and here is H so that's how we have water as our inorganic product but here is our organic product benzene sulfonic acid I like to give the importance of some of this chemistry so let us look at this so if you have here this substituted benzene a long chain hydrocarbon back here if you react this with H2SO4 it sulfonates it to put the SO3H group right here in the presence of a base it takes off that proton so let's just call this group here R so what you get first is R and your benzene ring and SO O 
O and H. After the second reaction, which is a base, remember base abstracts a hydrogen or proton, so it takes off this hydrogen here and you get that as your product. What's the importance of this? This is of course used in synthetic detergent. You'll see later on that detergents basically have a long chain hydrocarbon and an ionic end. So because of this hydrophobic, hydrophilic um, character, it removes dirt from your um, clothing as a detergent. But that's a practical application of sulfonation. Okay, let's turn our attention now to phenols. So let's first look at the nomenclature or refresh your memory of the nomenclature. First of all, phenol is benzene ring with an OH. So that's the phenol molecule. So if you can identify that in a molecule, that becomes the root for naming the molecule. So let's see, let's look at this molecule here. I hope you can recognize right here as the phenol portion. And if that's the phenol portion, this is number one, number two, and number three, four, five, and six. But on carbon number three is the nitro group. So it becomes 3 nitrophenol. Here's another one. Here is the phenol right here. This carbon is number 1, 2, and 3. Here's the nitro group again. But in this case, it's on carbon number 4. So it becomes 4 nitrophenol. Here's another one. Here's the phenol again, right here is number one, here's the OH, number one of the benzene ring, and here is the phenol portion. One, two, three, four, five, and six, and carbon's number three, and five is the chloro group. So it becomes three, for this three, five, for this five, and di, don't forget the di, so dichloro and phenol. So that's the way you name substituted phenols, but make sure you identify the OH benzene ring. Some more examples here. Of course, this again, that's phenol, 3-methylphenol. Here is the phenol, 1, 2, and 3. Don't forget a line like this means that this is a CH3 right here, and that's a methyl. That's a common name, Cresol. Here's a, an, an interesting one. It has two OH groups. So it becomes a diol. Notice two O's, diol. So it becomes a benzene diol. One, two, because it's on carbon number one and two. As you can imagine, this is one two, three, so one, three, benzene diol. Di means in, meaning two, and all meaning the alcohol portion. And of course, no surprise, one, two, three, and four. This is one, four, benzene diol, or hydroquinone. That's a common name for that. Okay, let's look at some of the applications here found in nature. Here's thymo, found in that seasoning thyme that we use um, to season our, our um, cooking, in our cooking. Here's the phenol portion right here. Here's a methyl group. Don't forget, this is a CH3. Here is a carbon. 
and CH3, CH3, that's called an isopropyl, but don't worry too much about that. But the main thing here is, here is the phenol portion. So this is considered a substituted phenol, thymol, very important. Here's another one, vanillin. Here's the OH, and here's the benzene ring. So that's the phenol portion. Notice it, it's polyfunctional. Here's an aldehyde. And here is an ether. But the bottom line is, here is the phenol portion, vanillin, of course, as you can imagine, this is the main ingredient in vanilla. And poison ivy, again, this is a 1,2-diol, as you can imagine, and a long chain here in terms of hydrocarbon. Capsaicin, found in peppers, and as you can imagine, here is the OH bonded to the benzene ring, so it's considered to be a substituted phenol. A couple more examples. So here is vitamin E. Believe it or not, vitamin E is a substituted phenol. Here's a phenol right here. And here's the rest of the molecule. Um, as, you can, as we'll explain later on, it's an antioxidant, which I'll explain in a second. Here's um, BHT, butylated hydroxytoluene. Here's the phenol portion right here. And um, here's another one, butylated hydroxyanisole. These compounds are called radical scavengers. Radical scavengers. Very important in, in biology because as you can see here, it breaks down the cycle and um, prevents um, destructive compounds called hydroperoxides that can exist in our bodies. So let's see how it works. So let's look at BHT for example. It's a synthetic antioxidant, butylated hydroxytoluene. If we should break this bond, notice this bond here is a covalent bond, two electrons. But if we should break this bond putting one electron onto the oxygen from that covalent bond and the other electron onto the hydrogen, we call that a homolytic cleavage. We created here a radical. Radical because it has an odd electron. It's a stabilized radical and these stabilized radicals are used in the food industry as preservatives. Another example is that of vitamin E. The vitamin E that I showed you earlier, this is it with the homolytic cleavage of that H bond here to give this radical. These radicals are used, as shown here, they act as scavengers, radical scavengers. So destructive radicals that's in the body, this radical from vitamin E serves to scavenge them or to react with them and take them out of the body. And hence, the bottom line is they act in protecting the or organism from oxidative damage. So that's an important aspect of these natural phenols. Reactions. So let us look at the phenol again. So here's the phenol molecule. Let me draw it out here again just for emphasis. So we have here the phenol molecule which has an O bonded to an H. Phenol. As we have recorded mentioned in general chemistry, it's an acid. Let's define an acid. An acid is 
a proton H plus donor. So, an acid, a Lewis acid, it must contain at least an H. Here's that H. So if it gives up this H as H plus, it's an acid. It has to give it up to something, so it gives it up to a base. A base, as you will recall, is a proton acceptor. So if it's accept, anything that accepts this hydrogen is a base. So let's go up here and look at this reaction now. Here we have phenol with this H. Here we have sodium hydroxide because as you know it is a strong base. So this hydroxide anion takes this H here to form water. What's left behind is OH negative and sodium plus and that's considered a salt. So this is an acid-base reaction. An acid-base reaction. Bottom line, phenol undergoes an acid-base reaction because it has an acidic hydrogen. As you can see from here, it's a weak acid. So it's not a strong acid like hydrochloric acid, or sulfuric acid, or nitric acid. It's very weak, and that's why it will react with a strong base such as sodium hydroxide. So you should be able to predict the product of phenol or substituted phenols with a base to give here the salt and water. Another type of reaction that phenols undergo is oxidation. Let's refresh your memory in terms of oxidation. Oxidation here is the supply of oxygen. One definition, so let's analyze that first. Here is a phenol here is the product of a reaction, but notice we have here more oxygens in this molecule compared to phenol. So it is suggesting that this reagent here is an oxidizing agent. Another definition of oxidation is the removal of electrons. So here we have two, four, and six electrons in the ring. Don't forget a line, a single line represents two electrons. So here we have six in the ring. Of course these are still other bonding electrons but looking at electrons in the ring there's six. In the reactant phenol there's six. In the product there are only two and so we have removed, or this reagent here, has removed two electrons from phenol to give this molecule. So therefore this is an oxidation. We'll see the importance of that in the biological system in the last slide. So phenols can be oxidized. Let's look at another one. Here's another oxidation, and it's an oxidation because we have two, four, and six electrons, and in the product we only have four. So there's a loss of electrons, and of course this is the oxidizing agent. So we have the same type reaction, this type, this time it's 1,4-benzene diol to give quinone, P, yeah, quinone. But the main thing here, though, is that we have an oxidation here. Another definition of oxidation, especially for organic chemistry, is the loss of hydrogen. Typically, oxidation reactions are accompanied by the loss of hydrogen. So notice that this hydrogen here 
is not here, it's gone. So again, that's an oxidation. So just to re review, oxidation is the removal of electrons. It is the supply of oxygen. And it is also the removal of hydrogen. Okay, so let's look here at um, a, a biological practical application of redox reaction or reduction oxidation. Let's start by looking at the product. This is, a, looks like a complex molecule, but it's actually coenzyme Q. But let's focus right here on the phenol portion right? This arrow indicates a reaction going in that direction, which means that it's an oxidation. If it's an oxidation, here's a product, loss of electrons, loss of hydrogen here, and we have seen here a change in oxidation state of the oxygens. Don't worry too much about that. The main thing is that we have lost hydrogen, and we have lost electrons, which is oxidation. So the importance here is that coenzyme Q in the reduced form can be oxidized to coenzyme Q in the oxidized form, and it's called ubiquinone, and in the reduced form it's ubiquinol. So that's a very important reaction in the biological system. This is the end of chapter 13. It's the last, last um, lecture for chapter 13. So continue reading your chapter in the textbook and follow along in these lecture videos. Hopefully they're, you're finding them helpful to explain and help you understand the material. But remember the bottom line here is that we are here to learn concepts, learn new information, and equally important is to develop an approach to utilize this information to solve problems, because we are scientists. So continue studying hard, and um, stay warm, and stay healthy. Okay?